Ok. Another day. Um, let's start today with connecting Stripe into our app and creating a monthly subscription payment. Um, I have already logged into Stripe and I think um, what we need to do, of course, is create a new app over here. Stripe and it is Stripe and I'm gonna connect test mode. There we go. I'm gonna connect it to this one. Test mode, so we can just do it like that, I think. And there it is. Okay, and then um, I need to, let's pull in this frame. Um, I need to create a product. Um, like here you can see we're in test mode. So we need our test product, uh, which is um, monthly subscription. And let's just say uh, five euros recurring monthly. So it's all fine. Save product, continue. And this one we need later on, I think. And then let's see. Um, so what do we do now? is data out maybe um, let's see what happens um, if we select stripe yeah that's sounds about right um, um, make payment um, sure. make payment Uh, check out type, subscription, use variable amount of checkout items, no payment method. Let's just go to credit card. Ah, success URL, cancel URL. Um, cancel URL will just um, go back to Create count. No, we'll go back to that. But success will go to the dashboard. Um, custom email. Um, not sure if we still have. No, there's nobody logged in at the moment. Okay. Let's first log in again. I need to fix this bug still, but I don't care much about it right now. Um, customer email. So now we have the customer email um, here. Um, log in. Um, loads. Current e user. There we go. Done. Customer ID. Is that needed? Mm, maybe. So we use this one. Allowed countries. Um, 
is a thing that is not so logic. Allow countries. If you select nothing, then you allow all countries. It's the first time that I did this. I went and checked every single country, which took me like forever. So if you select nothing, then you have actually selected everything. And then we have the checkout product. And here, but price is not the price, it's actually the ID of the product. And quantity is of course one, because you only have one subscription, tax ID will be bothered with. And after request, um, that is the same as that, I would say, but okay, so here we don't do that. And then we say close. And now what we have to change is that create user goes to create user details. And after user details, we don't, we're not gonna navigate to anything. We're gonna perform a request. If it's successful, that can stay. And the request is make payment. Close. Now I think that that is all. Um, should we check? Check, check, check. Am I still not in here? Yes, I am. In route. Okay, let's create an account. Um, let's say uh, this. Ah, this is weird. Undefined, undefined. It's populating here. That shouldn't be populating here. But that is because I have not changed the names. I thought that was not needed, but okay. So account overview. I need to change here the names. Company name. Um, overview. Name. Overview. Email. Overview. Publish. So what's happening is I'm populating these fields. So these fields have the same name in the create account, so it's also being populated there. Not really handy. So that is under actions, and we have them put here. So this should, uh, I need to refresh. So this should be a company name overview. And this should be email overview, and this should be name, name overview, overview. Okay, and now we don't we'll have the problem. Okay, let's just create a new account. in my stored stuff create account yes um, something is not happening and then the question is what is not happening This won't happen. This one didn't happen. Hmm. Um, why? That's new. And that's kind of weird. Okay, okay, okay. 
Why didn't that happen? Um, let's see, I'm gonna delete um, this. Okay, let's delete that one, and um, I'm gonna now. Oh God, I'm gonna try it inside. Wise, so I get at least an error message to know why it isn't happening. Um, data out. Um, da -da -da, great user. That one was working, this one didn't run. Great use of details. All will be fine. It's kind of strange. Insert no record, I mean it worked before, so why shouldn't it work now? Can we try? New role violates role level security for table users. I mean, that's super strange because this worked before. Okay, so we have some weird policies going on. Enable insert for authenticated users only. Yeah, okay, because it's not authenticated yet, because now we run the script on its own. But Okay, but if I run it with this, then it should run. So now we have an authenticated user. No, it still says. Okay. So for some reason, edit. I was pretty sure that this was supposed to be Aeon. Fine if just everybody can write in this. Um, you know. Just like this. So now let's um, education. Uh, let's delete this one again. And then we go to probably it's fine to just go here. Still not? Come on. Let's make what sounds, does it? No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I didn't. Okay, okay, now it's working. I had to. 
Oh yeah, now it's not here, but it's here. Oh, are we gonna make a mess? Oh, look. Dun, dun, let's do this. Table, authentication. Ah, okay, it was also there. Ah, oh, God, I read it. Delete. Well, okay. Um, let me just update this one. And I'm gonna create. Count create Don't tell me it's still not working. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make any sense. Okay, this was supposed to be a quick thingamajig. Let's run. Ignorate. Ah, okay. Ah. Uh, okay, that's super annoying because I'm in a free super base um, thing. So we have a rate limit for the emails. Super base sends an email um, to you to for you to confirm your account and there's a limit to that so many emails per hour and now because of this error I have exceeded the limit so we are forced to have a break but I mean uh, let me just show you a few things that I haven't showed you yet um, There are in Superbase, um, let me see, you can, uh, you can, uh, like these emails that it sends out, there are also templates for that. So you have confirmations sent out, that is just, so that's the email now that has been sent, like please confirm, so you can here style it in any which way you want which means any which way an email client can handle, which is not that much. And they also have like invite users into the system. And here you have the reset password email that should be sent out. And this is a magic link if you don't, you know, for if you want to um, enable that. So this is, you know, this, I, th I think what Superbase gets right is that it really makes a lot of stuff logic and pretty easy. Um, there's one thing that I have struggled with with Superbase and that is how to set up that when a Stripe payment is made that it also gets registered in your database, so in your table um, in table, I'm gonna add here um, subscribed, and the type is a boolean, and default value is false. So. So this is something that, um, of course, that you want that when a payment is made, that is being registered. Like, okay, this is actually the person that subscribed. Because if you only say, okay, he has an account so he can get into the system, that is not enough. It needs to be actually a paid account. So yeah, that is something that is not that easy to do. And that's probably easier to set up in Xeno. But still, I, yeah, I prefer Superbase at the moment. Just for one for one big reason that is that it's way way cheaper, like, like way cheaper. 
and it's it's open source so there's also quite a lot of uh, information to find also information for people with like no code skills whatsoever or no knowledge of backend shit so yeah I, I, yeah I just sticked with uh, Superbase even though I'm like everybody's talking about saying no probably they know something that I don't know or quite likely that they know something that I don't know so should I go to Xeno and is it then worth to pay that much more which means that if you build a web app it also should um, give you twice as much profit which is quite uh, a big thing to say So yeah, at this moment I don't uh, find it uh, find any need pretty much. But maybe maybe I'm gonna get stranded and, and and kick myself in the face at some point for not using Seno. But anyways, yeah, now we are uh, on a holding pattern because we cannot really test, but it should work. Um, while that is taking place um maybe i should add open ai open ai and that is not such a clear thing to do um so we need open ai this log in uh, we need to log into the ai and i'm gonna be blurring stuff here because we need to um what do I need? Let's see. Base URL. Oh yeah, all that stuff. Um, so we need uh, documentation. Da, 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 documentation. Um, where was it? Um, let's see. Here probably. Um, was something that I need to the base thing. Um, here I think it is. Is this it? Yeah, I think it's this. Um, let's see, we need the base a URL, which is this, right? Um, it's that, save, thank you very much. Um, let's just go here to the dashboard and make this amazing beautiful page i'm just gonna no it's not needed i'm just gonna add something in here um let's add a form and this is gonna be um whatever uh, Let's just make it super basic. Um, prompt. And this will be, I think this I don't need. This is going to be um, the, the, the open AI form. And this is prompt. And here we have. Waste. Prompt. 
Okay. This can go. This is of course. Maybe I'm not trying to do anything. Um, input fields. And the button. Okay. And we need diff. That margin. As we used. And we need a button. That's gonna say generate answer. I mean, of course, this is gonna be like, yeah, why would you build this? Because you can just do it in ChatGPT. But of course, it is about being able to pull it in. Then you can scope it. You can write in the back of the prompt. You can pull in whatever the user is filling in or that you ask. So you can have like a bunch of form fields where you ask for details. Then you have a very well written prompt, and that's that's of course the key selling point. This prompt in your app needs to be like super super good, so that you just fill in a few fields, press whatever it is, give me my result, and then you present the results. And and I mean that's that's a pretty basic app, which if you find the right thing to supply the right prompt the right answers and just make life for people that are not yet that equipped with writing a prompt i mean we all know we all do it we are already totally used to it but i'm pretty sure that like half of the population or more is absolutely not doing it yet you know so if you can create a tool that makes all this stuff so much easier because they don't need to think about the the, the, the right prompt to get the right result, then okay, you know, yeah, you, you can have a nice tool for whatever. And of course you can make it way, 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 way com more complicated. Sky is the limit. Did I already give this a name? Yes. Okay, so and then here, let's copy this again. Uh, and under this, I'm gonna put in a rich text. Let's just leave it empty for now. And I'm gonna call this wise. Dashboards. It doesn't make any sense this, but it's all good. Okay. So that's okay. Let's come to the dashboard. Where is it? There. Dashboard. Refresh. Attributes. So, okay, we have the open AI. That's all good, I guess. Uh, yes. And then here we create the data out. Um, send post prompt we get whatever I don't know that's just uh, open AI App, open AI URL endpoint um, I think that is Completion. Let's just close 
bunch of things here. I think this is completion method is post. Yeah, post. Okay, and then URL parameters. Do I need that? I don't know. This is the header stuff. Where should it be? Chat completion. Now this is now in the chat. Is it chat? It's getting very confusing when you scroll up and down everything. I need a model, I think. Making requests. That sounds about right. You know what? I'm getting a bit too confused. So let's go to um, let's go to Wised Open AI. In today's video, we build an AI-powered itinerary generator. Always handy. So we can just go forward to uh, this. Um, a completion. I'm gonna copy this part over here. And this is the base URL. Yeah, Everything that, that else correct. I'm going to paste this in here. So that we have already done. And now I can start building with. So and we're going to call it submit travel details. Yeah, very cool. Or maybe we can call it post travel details. Under app, we're going to select open AI. Uh, now it comes. And under URL endpoint, we're going to add completions. Completion, yes. Very good. Points for me. We're going to paste it in here. And under and method, post. we're going to select post. Okay. Now let's have a look at an example request inside of their documentation and see how we're supposed to populate these okay. fields in waste. Thank you very much. Here, we're going to look at curl requests. We have to be in this create completion thing. API reference. And completion. Great completion. Okay, so here we need to be. And then here we have HH with this is so this is the header content type. So this we need to put in the headers content type. And where are we here? And that's application JSON. Y type if you can copy. Say and there was another one I think. And that is authorization. Authorization, and then we have here bearer with a space, and then we need our API key. So I'm gonna get my API key, and I'll do that on a different screen. Um, was it personal view API key and we're gonna create a new key and web pack setup create key copy okay that's copied a bearer space update and of course this is secret so that's good 
and then we have that set up I think we don't need to worry about parameters and then we have the body and then we go back to this here we need to add the model key module and for now it is still tabs like page 3 this is gonna be next year uh, replaced um, so I close so uh, prompt that's a wrong one temperature temperature is from my understanding kind of like um, how much freedom you give OpenAI to provide your answer. So if you put uh, one or two, I think two is the max, then you get more variety each time you ask for an answer and it's, yeah. And if you press zero, then each time you prompt the exact same thing, you should also get the same answer back and it's yeah that's a lot i understand of it um max tokens so max tokens it's uh how many tokens he can use each token you have to pay for it's like a super small super small amount uh, but of course it can add up if you have like if you're doing a good job and you have a good app then you might be getting more clients and they generate a lot so but i mean it's 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 fine you know like whatever three thousand tokens is like a word or part of a word and yeah and that's it and then the most important part the prompt and the prompt is the prompt so this is this is the part where you can can uh, get where your talent is gonna come in because how good are you at writing the prompt and are you actually that good that you can create an app sell subscriptions based on your brilliant prompt and that it's so brilliant that people cannot be bothered uh, typing that in themselves in OpenAI or ChatGPT but and instead actually are willing to pay to use your prompt so yeah I don't know I don't know things are moving fast and people are getting better and better with using API and, and uh, uh, using uh, OpenAI and, and writing their own prompt so yeah jump jump on the high speeding train and see where you fall off that's pretty much the race at the moment I think and of course when you fall off that is because everybody can do what you're doing so yeah that's 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 the interesting part uh, the prompt now I'm not sure what the structure of the prompt should be so back to the tutorial um, let's see. I think I need to contract yet the prompt Max tokens so that is just a right step away from writing the prompt and lastly I'm gonna add my prompt this is the most important part and this is the trickiest part you'll have to experiment a little bit to see which results you'll get from your prompt now in this case i will not I show you the whole process no. how i experimented with different prompts i'm Very just going to paste in the and how it works all right this needs to be a logic component so i'm going to write here this double squiggly brackets at the beginning and at the end and so yeah so that's pretty much the the the, the form of it so it's 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 a string so you just write it and uh, this this and this this 
and then it's already a string you can make it like that to make the, the flea string I think in the upcoming update in Rise you are you always have to write your um, things what are they called I don't know to make it string and now the now Rise turns everything into a string automatically when it is a string without you having to specify it um, so okay so anyway so here we write our prompt and what we're now doing is I'm just gonna make it super simple and that is we're just gonna throw in the prompt and I'm gonna say answer the following question please with in no in HTML format format text without using without suing using um, I don't want the nice one that could be enough and that is the question that's so now you're just doing nothing pretty much but that's fine that's fine done okay let's see actions um, Generate answer select daily attribute is a gener generate answer and that's gonna what it's gonna do it's gonna click yes we'll click form request it's our last request mm. post yeah I find it this naming post prompt confusing that's all okay I'm gonna change it okay just see yeah post to me is 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 is, is, is um, where is it right here me post this this posting so I'm gonna just write generate generate answer so that's what it does should we run it um how long is the longest no I don't know how tall is the tallest building and where is it located. Okay, should we see? Let's see. Okay, and here we have the answer. No, where's the answer? Request false as it's got 200 now successful warning this model version is yeah we know that already so it's going to be changed um where is the answer There's no answer given in this, but it's successful. It's 200. You just don't get the answer. That's okay, I guess. Um, okay, then we have actions because now we want to um, show 
this was generate answer show answer in OpenAI attributes and this is the prompt answer um, set set text yeah I guess so select type HTML data So this should be here somewhere. I'm an answer, but I don't see it. Choices, data, choices. Text completion. Hmm. I have the feeling that it didn't really generate a real answer. Did it? It says that it's successful, but it should also somewhere create the answer. Is it this? And this is. Answer for the last page. No, no, no. Is it maybe this? Doesn't sound like it is. And note that we also so, have these literals over here at the beginning and at the end. So far, this is a string, but inside here, we want to add the user's input. So what we have here is the start date, the end yeah. date, destination, budget. That's exactly the same as what we're having down here. That's fine. And cool. Now let's run this request to make sure that everything is set up correctly. Here under choices.text, we can see that we get the HTML that we need on our site. Cool. Okay. So yeah, that is indeed the thing that it should do. Should we just maybe Try it. Um, dash, dash. What? Dash, forward. Find four. So we just going something wrong. So we did got something back, <laughs> but I don't know what we got back. Um, let's see. Uh, date out. Um, so there's something funny with our prompt. Think 
got confused with our slices. Try it again. Where is what one? Answer this is the answer to the question. Yeah. nice um, Let's make it simpler. I saw that. Let's make it like this. So there's something not working as it should. Please answer the fourth question. Question. Where did I got to the day that I, I think I don't know, I think this is this all that should be there. Run it here, probably. Well, I got here an answer. No, it's something. I think the answer makes much sense, but okay. How can I learn to fly? Yeah, just doesn't make much sense. Who are you? Well, I think I'm just getting all the time. Thing that doesn't actually use this. Okay, let's take a step back. Ah, see. Bracket. Oh, these input fields are done with. 
stuff around them. So, okay, let's just do the same thing. Um, point, point, point. So this should be um, the Larsen. Curly, curly. Curly, curly. Um, let me try. just go all the way down okay then we just need to also do all this stuff I'm not entirely sure why that is okay, let's just blindly do it and then this is like so a little difficult for answer The text here. Answer, answer. That doesn't sound like it is correct. I'm looking at my on the screen to see if I did it correctly. like I did. Seems like I did. Okay. Um it seems like I did. Should be correct. I think. No. Text, answer, answer. Yeah, that is not really. Uh, an answer is it? just not functioning at all what am I doing wrong I don't know this is all as it should be work okay 
it should work. Our start date. Then we're going to add our end date. We're going to do the same thing, dollar sign, squiggly brackets. And inside of this, we're going to add our end date. Yeah, I think this is also already outdated there, eh? because now if we do like this with squiggly bracket stuff, and we do that, then we get it like so. And God knows if that is better. I don't think so. See, it just, it just goes nuts. It just goes nuts. Oh my god. And of course I have got this to work. So I'm doing something wrong here. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break, I think. Figure stuff out. Because this is not gonna make much sense. I'm doing something wrong and it's probably something like stupid. So what happens if I make this one? Let's see. And 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 I put this prompt back the way it was. Um, so like old style. Just not, it's just not doing it. Okay, forget it. Um, should we see if the Stripe thing is at least working already? Um, users is still um, oh, I still not got that user in. So let's see if we can already. Create account. We are already up and running. With the emails. Yeah, I don't think so. Pretty frustrating. But, well, it is what it is. I think this is still gonna give us an error. For security purpose, you can only request this after 23 seconds. What? Seconds. Okay. Okay. Twenty-three seconds finished. Now ah, we still have the email rate limit. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm gonna be back this afternoon and to finish up this stuff because then we have our emails back on, so we can see if the Stripe thing is working. And we're gonna figure out in the meantime what I did wrong with OpenAI, why the prompt isn't working. I had it working in the app that I built last week, but I'm doing something wrong. And knowing myself, it's probably something very stupid. So I'll be back and then we get this fixed, I promise. Catch you later.